I have never started the video at my curing machine. This is ground affected, my name is your dad. Today I'm painting Apocalypse from Super Shark. Normally I omit a lot of this process from my videos because I find it to be rather boring. But I figured for a change today, we'll start at the curing machine. With this particular curer, I was given this by Nova 3D, which is a fantastic thing for me. Uh, but the way that I cure on this is around five minutes on each side at the highest level. And then uh, that's pretty much done for me. Let's be honest though, this is going to be different for every machine that you use. And also, let's be even more honest, this video is not about curing 3D prints, it's about painting them. Oh, and a lot of people have asked, what does my collection look like? Well, my collection is starting to look like it's uh, getting out of hand. And this is my studio, which is still currently a work in progress, but this is the front of my studio. And as you can tell, every surface that is available has a model on it. Uh, but let's get into painting the apocalypse instead of worrying about the studio and the mess. And while the rest of the stuff cures, I'm going to take these parts up to the studio. The only thing is, is that I'm not actually quite done because I still have to support this base and get that printed. And then I can start actually working on the model. Now while I wait for this to export, and uh, I'm gonna obviously send it to print, it's now time for me to start prepping the model. That's how my parts come out, and obviously I'm still gonna prep these parts, and I'm gonna still sand them so that they are ready for painting, uh, but I need to get rid of some of these little support bits and stuff. And as soon as that's done, I can paint these things. As you can see, the supports that I use do leave a little bit of a mark. And uh, this is pretty normal, to be honest. You're going to have a mark from most supports. This is so easy to clean up and get rid of. Uh, honestly, this is the reason why I use the supports like I do. And uh, hopefully, if you're using my supports, uh, you're having a similar result. The tools that I use for cleaning up models like this vary quite uh, immensely uh, depending on my mood and how much effort I want to put in. What I have been doing lately a little bit more is wet sanding as opposed to dry sanding. This is in an effort to kind of control the amount of resin dust that I seem to be uh, producing. And so far, so good. I make sure at this time as well to make sure that everything is sticking together in the correct manner because if it doesn't, now is the time you want to do any sanding and not later. Having printed a bunch of miniatures that need to go on a base, I need to now go and print said base. And thus I'm going to walk into the back of my shop where my printers are. Look at this mm, printer, printy printy printer. This Uniformation GK2 is one of my favorite machines so far, genuinely. I have, this is my go-to machine. I have a lot of machines in the back and that's the one that I go to 99.9% .9 of the time at the moment. Also, another thing that is my go-to is a Citadel a black spray primer, just because it's easy to grab out the front of my studio and uh, it does a pretty decent job at doing a black primer on my models. Now let's get started painting on this dang model and the first and most important thing after you've got your black primer on is to start with the zenith or highlight. I'm not going to do that to the entire model though, uh, but specifically this base, I wanted it to be a little bit brighter so that the colours I layer over the top are going to be, well, brighter. And I'm going to start layering sandy colours because it's supposed to be some kind of duny sandy coloured thing. So. Henceforth, I shall be using Sandy Dooney, you know what I mean. I'm just going to spray a load of browns that are not too dark brown, and uh, that's going to look kind of like sand. One trick I am using while spraying this is I am uh, dropping the pressure of my airbrush as low as possible to make sure that the paint is definitely speckling. Of course, I did the same technique to the little miniatures uh, because they need to look almost like they are part of the base, and that is because uh, they are part of the base, and at this point, I'm going to stick them all in their places using some super glue and a little bit of a activator to make this situation a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. 
And this uh, completes the base. We are free to now move on to the rest of the model. And in order to do that, I'm going to need some way of holding these parts. And the best way I have found is by shoving sticks of any form. Uh, these are broken paintbrushes, which I have purposely broken for this uh, specific task. And I shove them into the draining holes, uh, which I leave a fair amount of them over in order for me to shove sticks into. So I can hold them and paint them uh, just like this. Uh, this ammo by MIG color, I have no idea what it is because or a lot of my ammo by MIG colors seem to be rubbing all of their names off of the labels, which is extremely helpful for when you want to replace that color later on so you just buy five of the same colors and that way ammo makes a little bit more money never mind my faults with that silly labeling system let's get back to how i painted this uh, blue because this entire model is blue and this is a very difficult thing for me personally because i absolutely hate blues i don't know why i just really struggle making loads of different blues look like different blues and not look silly but in this case i just mixed a bit of black with the blue a little bit of uh, blue ink with the black and uh bob is in fact your uncle with this model but for real what i was doing was just trying to make a darker blue metallic color that is why i started with the metallic bluish color and realized it was not dark enough but i was able to darken it up with some tints a bit because there was a metallic color underneath it it still retains that metallic glittery sheen that we all love from metallic paints at this point i'm also going to spray this other blue metallic color that i have from ammo by mig just all over the model but Again, I don't have the quite the correct colors that I need, so I'm going to have to mix up a load of different colors to try and build up some highlights over the top of this blue. The pants was the easy part, and uh, for the top part, I'm going to need to do a little bit of masking, even though I absolutely hate masking. Uh, but in this case, a couple of minutes just uh, blocking off an area really helps me to not have to get overspray onto the paints uh, that I had painted earlier. I'm going to use as many uh, times as I can a little bit of white to continually build up the brightness of this color. One of the only things that I like about blues is that you can use white to build it up to a brighter color. It's one of the only colors that allows you to do this without completely breaking every single one of uh, the color theory rules. Uh, it probably is in some form, uh, but I don't care. If you do this to red, you're going to have pink and do this to purple you're gonna have lighter purple maybe pink i don't know but realistically if you're gonna do this to a true blue it's just gonna get lighter and lighter and this is probably one of the only ways to give you uh, the brightness that you need on the highlighted parts of the model apocalypse is one of those characters that has what a lot of people like to call a dick cloth and this is a cloth which covers the bulge in your really tight spandex pants as a superhero or a villain depending on uh, where you fall into the logistic lines of comic books but this dick cloth needed to be painted blue and in order to paint it blue i'm going to first paint it purple using leviathan purple contrast paint and i'm going to highlight that with a little bit of blue from the airbrush and then i took a bit of black templar which is a contrast paint as well and painted that into the insides underneath of his armpits uh, where there is like a weird different texture on his dick cloth he has uh, what is uh, some kind of form of uh, design pattern in the renders and uh, so I needed to match this with my painting and thus forth I did this uh, by freehanding this uh, this may not be an easy thing for many people uh, but in reality if you just try to keep your paintbrush straight and uh, use a fair amount of flowy uh, paint it should work I, I don't really know how else to tell you this this only comes from practice if you are afraid of using your paintbrush uh, then you would probably be afraid of doing that and you could probably just leave out that part when I was done uh, wasting my time by building little dollies and uh, not being completed with them before building them I decided to come back to the torso and give it some more definition on the little separator parts I don't the beading of his suit I don't, these words are really difficult for me because I don't know what these things are but I just used a blue uh, contrast paint to paint over the top of those so they were darker and separated from the rest of the suit I dry brushed that light blue color that we don't know what 
is from Ammo Bamig over the cables that supply the oxygen to his hands. Uh, yes, that is exactly what they do. Also, do you remember I sucked up some paint earlier? I used that paint back into my palette in order to paint the insides of his gloves. There are some lighter areas on the inside there, at least what I can see in the reference pictures there are. And so I painted those and then repainted the black tubes that go between them uh, before building up the rest of the model. At this point I can start adding in all the tubes and hands and everything together. Luckily everything is a very good press fit on this model. Uh, the only part that doesn't fully press fit is the torso to the legs, uh, but it's, it stays up all by itself so I'm going to leave it like this with no magnets for now. And while I paint the head sculpt for this model, I just want to mention that this video was sponsored by Super Shark, a Patreon. You should go check them out. I will leave a link for them in the description. If you like this model and you want to paint it and 3D print it for yourself, then you can go find their Patreon in the link in the description. And I want to say a special thank you to Super Shark for sponsoring this video because without the sponsoring of the videos, uh, the lights wouldn't be on and I wouldn't be able to see what I'm painting. Speaking Speaking of painting, as you may notice, I had to darken up the top of his head. He's, I don't actually know what's going on with this guy, I'm not gonna lie, but I don't know if he's wearing a mask or if he just looks weird. But basically I needed to paint this guy as if he just came out of one of the Blue Man Group the friggin stage shows and this is exactly what I ended up doing. I did need to darken up that head though because the separation from swimming cap to face was not good enough for me. I also used the same trick on the suit over the lines on his head as well but this time using black in order to make them separate themselves from each other. This definitely helped to create some definition. I also very finely painted a super thin layer of uh, red paint onto the inside of his eyes to make them kind of look like they're glowing uh, which ended up maybe looking like he had a bit of uh, shadow stuff makeup on his cheeks. I then used the panel liner to add a little bit more definition to some other features on the head and that's pretty much where I called this model done. Hopefully this video answered maybe one or two of your questions. If not, maybe it was just entertainment enough while you sat in the bath and of course this is a very good time for me to say a very special thank you to my patrons because of course without them I don't have lights to blind my eyeballs and uh, I would like to thank them right now. Now I would also like to say uh, that if you didn't like anything you saw in this video this is also the time where you can just uh, click like share it with the grand and then after that you can kindly uh, f off. Oh, and as a little bit of an afterword, uh, Super Shark did want me to mention uh, that they have an alternate head sculpt as well as shoulder pads and uh, another hand and a couple of other little things as an additional uh, to this model. So if you like that, then go check it out in the description down below.